They say that if you want to cool beer quickly, you just need to wrap it in a wet paper towel and put it in the freezer. Does that really work? Let's find out. So, we have two bottles of beer that are exactly the same temperature. Using a thermal camera, we can see that they are more or less exactly the same color, so they are identical in temperature. Now we wrap only one of them in a piece of wet paper towel, and then we put both of them in the freezer. And set a timer for 30 minutes. Let's start it. Half an hour later, we take out our bottles. We have two identical thermometers. We pour them at the same time and see if the temperature is the same. I'd say that's enough. Note that it's 11.2 degrees for the bottle with the paper towel and 13.5 degrees, 0.7 degrees, for the bottle without the paper towel. This might be a possible conceptual explanation. So, the rate at which a warm body transfers heat to a cold body, in this case the minus 18 degree air, depends on several factors. The most important factor is the surface contact area. What I'm saying is that here we have a significantly larger surface contact area between the paper towel and the air compared to this one, where we have smooth glass in contact with the air. Here we've got all these ridges, all these little folds, which means that there's a much more effective transfer of heat compared to this one, where everything is smooth. Another important factor is the material itself, and specifically the material's ability to transfer heat. Here we have water transferring heat to the air, and here we have glass transferring heat to the air. Glass transfers heat better than water, and if we were to base it solely on this, this bottle should be colder than the other one. So, the factors kind of balance each other out, with surface contact area prevailing. Let us know in the comments if you tried as well. Of course, you might get different results because you'll have a different freezer, different bottles, and different water. In short, just be aware that your results might be slightly different. Gosh, that's really freezing. Minus 16.6. It's incredible. Guys, why does this happen? I'm going to explain it to you. We usually use ice to cool drinks, right? We put them in and make them colder. We cool them down, but ice alone can only reach a minimum temperature of approximately zero degrees, correct? And in fact, it's 0 0.8 degrees. However, if we add some salt, that's just everyday table salt, and stir it in, the temperature drops enormously. Minus 16.6. How does water go from zero to minus 16.6 degrees? Well, it's because when we put salt on the ice, the ice melts, and to melt, the ice needs heat. Where does it get that heat? It gets it from the water. So the water transfers heat to the ice to melt it, and by transferring the heat, its temperature drops from zero to minus 16.6 degrees. Now the question might be, how can water be liquid at minus 16.6 degrees? Shouldn't it freeze? It's true that water has a freezing point of zero degrees, but only if it's pure. If we dissolve salt in it, the freezing point drops, and it can consequently go from zero to minus one, minus two, minus five, depending on how much salt we add. It can reach a minimum of minus 21 degrees, at which point no more salt dissolves, meaning we have a saturated solution. Minus 16.3. Minus 16.6. That's as low as it will go for this experiment. Take your drinks, put them in, and within minutes, they'll be ready. Clearly, use something bigger. If you have a larger container, put in half a kilo of salt. Be careful not to leave things in for too long, because otherwise everything will freeze, obviously. In here, we've got plain old water, while in this one, there's tonic water. Under regular light, they're pretty much identical, except for the bubbles. But if we turn off the regular light and switch on a UV flashlight, look what happens. You can see very clearly that regular water doesn't absorb ultraviolet waves, while tonic water does. So, the tonic water absorbs ultraviolet light and emits blue light. We call this phenomenon fluorescence. In tonic water, the fluorescence is due to the presence of quinine hydrochloride, a molecule that also gives the drink its signature bitter taste. Well, this molecule can absorb ultraviolet rays and emit blue light. This phenomenon, as we said, is called fluorescence. But if we now add a few drops of... Watch this. The fluorescence disappears completely. Try to guess in the comments what we added to make the fluorescence completely disappear.